Boys and girls, we're back for another one. Today we're watching a video on logarithms, really a topic that does show up on the ACT pretty frequently, pretty much every test or every other test it's on there in some form. Today we're gonna work on expanding and condensing logarithms and apply it to the ACT questions that show up. So let's take a quick lesson on logarithms first. Logarithms are just another language of exponents. So when I do x to the seventh times x to the fifth, what do you do? Through exponents, you add. So this is really x to the 12th. Again, you add. What about if I have division, x to the seventh over x to the fifth? Through division, what do you do? You subtract, it's x to the second, really subtraction. And what about the last one if I have x to the seventh to the fifth? What do we do with the power of a power? Well, you multiply. So this is gonna be x to the 35th. And really, logarithms are just the inverse of that. Watch what I mean. If I have log of x plus log of y, what did we say? Through multiplication was addition. So through addition, what should we expect? Very good, multiplication. Really log of x times y or xy. Let's take a look at a case of subtraction. What if I have log of x minus log of y? Well, in that case, what do we say? Through division of exponents, you subtract. So through subtraction, what should we expect? Division. Wow, that makes so much sense. Last one here is maybe the hardest one. It's called the power rule of logarithms. Really, what do we say? With power of a power, you multiply. In that case, I have log of x to the fifth. What can I do with that five? Really, remember that this is a power of a power. What can I do with that five? Again, like I said, this is the most confusing one, but essentially you can drop it down to the front. Again, creating multiplication, like we said, really five times log of x. So those are the foundations or fundamental properties of logarithms. So I wanna try applying them to ACT questions out. Come down here with me to number 48. This is a question from a real ACT and it's so, so easy as long as you know the properties. Wait a second, what did we just say? Through division, again, through division, you subtract. So really, through division, it can become subtraction. So which answer choice do we like for 48? Well, for 48, I have log of m minus log of n. That's how they got those fractions like that. Again, subtraction is division. I really like answer choice J. Done, that took seconds. Come over here with me for number 45. This one's a little tougher. You would think that you could plug this in your calculator and get away with it, but actually 10 to the 5,000 is way too big. Your calculator would just explode. Really, this question was designed to have students avoid their calculator and show that they know the properties of logarithms. Let's try. What did we say? Through multiplication, what is multiplication between logs? Log of three plus log of 10 to the 5,000. Again, through addition, it's multiplication, really. Through multiplication, it's addition. Okay, cool. But now what? What did we say earlier? Really, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see it right there. Power of a power, it was multiplication. Really, what can I do with this power of the five? I could drop it to the front. So although this value is too big for our calculator, 10 to the 5,000, what can I do with that 5,000? I can drop it to the front. I have log of three plus five log of 10. And remember, it doesn't specify, it doesn't say, but maybe it should. These are in ba log base 10. If a log doesn't specify, it is in base 10. From there, what is log base 10 of 10? Just one. And this, this test is designed for no calculator, really. So what is log base 10 of three without a calculator? It's 0.5. So at the end of the day, what is the final answer? It's five, that was a 5,000. So I have 5,000, remember this dropped to the front, so 5,000 plus, what was log base 10 of three? 0.5. The final answer is 5,000. Point 0.5.
five. So the answer choice is D. Like I said, that one is a little bit more challenging, but I wanna come down here to the real challenge question, this one. This one is a number 56 from a real ACT. So if you would like, pause the video right here, take a stab at this question, and if you can get this question right, you're demonstrating a pretty strong mastery of condensing and expanding logarithms. All right, so if you want to just watch along, Let's get it. Really, what I noticed for this, if I have log of a times b squared all over c, notice I took a second to understand that that was multiplication between those two. Why? Because in that case, I can separate multiplication as addition and really division as subtraction. So let's take a look. I have log, I'll zoom out a little bit. We have log of a plus log of b squared minus log of c. And from here, I take a look at the answer choices, and unfortunately, my answer choices don't match up. But I don't panic because I know that I can get this question right. I notice that, hmm, answer choice f looks really close, really, really good. The only difference is, oh, they pulled that 2 to the ground floor. Really, I have log of a plus 2 log of b minus log of c. And my friends, that is the final answer. It is indeed F. And really, I was explaining that, and it, even, it didn't even take me a minute. So go ahead and get these skills down. Practice a little bit. If you find these videos helpful, like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next one.